Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to a new video. Today we're going to talk about Galileo Neo, which has been released. This is an update to the Galileo Endeavor OS. And so without wasting further time, let's dive right in. Okay, so a few highlights of Endeavor OS Galileo is that it has been released with the Linux kernel 6.7 and Mesa 23.3.3. It's not a big update, but these two changes are in and, of, in and of themselves very, very important. And it also has now the Calamaris 3 installer. So once you boot up Galileo Neo before installing the system, this is what you would get. So it would say that you can install the ARM image installer. We can update the mirrors. And by the way, as you can see, this is a Arch based distribution. So this is pretty good. And I really like how they put change display resolution because when you boot it up, it's, it defaults to uh, 1024 by 768, so not the best resolution, but that's a good baseline and you can easily change it if you want to. From here, you have general info and change language, software news, change log, which is all very great. Now let's start the installer. We're not going to install, but let's just go through a few of the steps. So it does have an online method and an offline method. I guess we're going to go with offline, but if you are online, you can actually choose the desktop environment. By default, it gives you the KDE Plasma. So if we go to system and if we go to about system, let's just uh, see where it is. Yep, so we can see that it ships with KDE Plasma version. I mean, if you are familiar, you already knew that. And it has KDE Frameworks version 5.11 and the Qt version is 5.15. As we can see, it does have 6.7.1 Arch, which is the latest. It also has X11. Now this isn't Wayland. This is X11. Maybe I hope to see Wayland soon because remember, the KDE Plasma 6 version is right around the corner. It's going to be released in February and I can't wait to make a video and that defaults to Wayland. So maybe Endeavor OS will start using Wayland. I'm not totally sure, but if you know, let me know down in the comments. So let's just go through with the offline install and let's see what kind of things it gives us. Calamaris is actually pretty well known in the Linux community for being a very good installer and Galileo Neo, it, it actually looks lovely by the way. Let's click next and I am in Kolkata and we're going to default to the American keyboard. So, and we can also have a grub bootloader or no bootloader. So if you already have a bootloader, which let's say you're dual booting and you already have grub installed and you can just have it point to that. But if you don't have it, then this would be the standard way to go, which is why it's enabled out of the box. You can erase the disc or you can have manual partitioning. And let's just go with erase disk for now. Remember, we're not going to actually install. We're just showing the steps. You can enter your full name, uh, computer name. You can have a login name and you can also have a password. By default, it says it's too short because there is nothing. And login automatically is disabled. And then you get a summary of your partitions, your full name, your username, your password, not the password, but the other things. And then you get to install and last would be the finished screen. We're not going to install the OS right now, but because this is just for the demo. So let's just talk about a few things which have been fixed this time around. So like I said, it's bringing with it a new kernel, Calamaris 3.3, Mesa 23.3.3. And one of the things which this new installer brings with it is the ability to automatically install the R8168 LTS package. So when the user selects the Linux kernel LTS option and to properly unmount a device, when an installation error occurs so that it can be used again immediately for another installation session. Now there are other things which have been fixed. So we sh already showed you the offline installation method, which by the way, defaults to KDE Plasma. And in that session, the devs have managed to address several issues in the bash script, so which I don't know, it, it used to cause some problems uh, for real in sessions. And now the KDE Plasma online installation option also can fetch the old named packages. And last but not the least, we have Endeavor OS addressing an issue that caused annoying effects in composition in KDE Plasma live environment for users with machines running legacy Intel graphics. Now, this is not legacy. This is, uh, I guess, UHD graph graphics of some sort. I'm not totally sure what, what, it, what it is. 
And by the way, since this is based on Arch, we also get new versions of Firefox. So Firefox, we're getting 122. We also get Xorg server 21.1.11. So that's pretty good. Let's just check the version. We can go to help and about Firefox. We are running 122 out of the box. So this is for Arch Linux, as we can see, it's clearly mentioned. And we already talked about the Kitty frameworks gear and all that stuff. So yeah, that's it. I mean, pretty short video. There's This isn't a big release. And if you are familiar with uh, Endeavor OS, you already know what to expect. And yeah, with that, we come to the end of this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. This is a lovely distribution if you want to run Arch, if you want to game. And KDE, as always, very, very well flushed out distributions, uh, desktop environments, I mean. One of the best I have ever seen. One of the best that anybody has ever seen. And yeah, I'll catch you on the next time. Peace.